And welcome back. Despite yesterday's chaos on Capitol Hill, the stock markets made some sizable gains. The Dow, the S&P, the Nasdaq, the Russell, all up as well today. Here are the numbers from yesterday. The Dow climbed more than 400 points. The S&P managed to hit an all-time high during the session's closing bell. The Nasdaq down, but that's also a sign because it's tech-heavy that a lot of the investors are looking towards a pandemic recovery. So what's going on here? Looks like the country's falling apart, but the stock market seems to love it. Let's welcome in now financial analyst and president of Zuma Global, Heather Zumaraga, and her new book, The Man's Guide to Corporate Culture, is available for pre-order now. If you follow her on Twitter, she's actually got hard copies of the book. Maybe you can get one soon. Also with us, business and market analyst Seth Denson. Seth, Heather, great to see you both. Hey, John. Good to, Good to be here. All right, so what's going on with the stock market, Heather? A lot of people think, look, Joe Biden's in office, Nancy Pelosi's the Speaker of the House, Chuck Schumer is the Senate Majority Leader. This cannot be good for American business. They're going to lock down the country. Got to be bad for investors, right? Why is the stock market up? Right. All of the indices are actually at record highs as we speak right now. And the main reason is because despite a blue wave, if you're a Republican and you're not happy about the election outcome right now, uh, the positive news, if you're an investor, is that more stimulus is coming, right? Um, both uh, President-elect Joe Biden and, and Speaker Pelosi have said that this next round is part of the CARES Act and, and fiscal stimulus, COVID relief, right? Those $600 mm -hmm. checks and more rounds for small businesses uh, assistance as well. That That's just a down payment. And not too many fiscal conservatives have been complaining about our debt and deficits. Now our debt stands at over $27 trillion. And I know you've talked about this, uh, John, quite often, that uh, our debt and deficits keep rising. And I know we've needed this aid during COVID, but at what point does long-term government dependence, uh, when, when that may not be a good thing for our economy or the stock market either. There, there are uh, negative implications such as inflation. Oh, absolutely. And Seth, I think that's part of the angst from some of the protesters yesterday is they know this. They know our debt and deficit keep going up. Republican leaders used to talk about this 10, 12 years ago. It was, used to be a big deal. doesn't seem to mod bat, but, but they're the folks that are going to have to pay this stuff back eventually. And, you know, at the same time, Wall Street gets rich during the pandemic. Middle Americans are really struggling from these lockdowns. There seems to be a disparity in what we're seeing here. Well, there is. And I think there's a disparity in how we look at the economy, right? There is the stock market. Uh, but then there's also small business, and they've been greatly impacted by this and are still impacted by this. But Heather's right in that looking at what the Democrats are likely going to do, there's going to be an influx of cash. And that cash is going to lead to the markets doing quite well in the short term. And the markets have tended to think in short-term cycles for quite some time now uh, to gain those short-term gains. But to the idea of inflation, those chickens are going to come home to roost. Right. Is that going to be during our lifetime or our children's lifetime? We shall see. But as Heather also said, inflation is going to be the end of the day part of that. But another, another uh, side of the sector that benefits from that, banks. Banks did quite well yesterday. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing, right? Because banks are, you know, nobody's going to hold banks accountable. They're going to keep sticking it to the little guy. They're going to do fine. Uh, and, you know, they don't have to pay anybody interest, right? Because, Heather, they're going to, you know, if Janet Yellen is going to be the Treasury Secretary, interest rates are going to remain zero. There's going to be no incentive to save any money. Absolutely. I mean, when you look at the uh, the record amount of cash on hand and savings in, in Americans' uh, bank accounts. Perhaps some of that is due to worry, political unrest. You have uncertainty over COVID. And if you will have a job when the economy reopens, if you've been laid off. And all of those have caused many Americans to save. But this is a positive for the banks because J.P. Morgan, JP Morgan Goldman Sachs, Morgan Stanley, all rising today uh, and yesterday because interest rates are going up. With all the stimulus and money printing, expect auto loans, your mortgages, uh, credit cards. Eventually, those rates will tick higher. A lot of economists were calling for that after the 2008 recession when the Fed was, in effect, printing money <clears throat> and buying bonds. But you know what? That never really materialized. It didn't happen. But we have now, I mean, it's almost $10 trillion when you include both what the government has done mm. uh, on a fiscal side as well as the monetary side from the Fed, $10 trillion. It, 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 this time, it's, it's different. Yeah, and anyone who's ever experienced any amount of personal debt can maybe get a grasp on just how devastating this could be long term when we're all spending money from our taxes on interest, paying interest and paying down the debt that we owe 
uh, decades from now. Seth, thanks so much. We'll see you again soon. Heather, great to see you as always. We'll talk thanks, to you both Sharon. again in the near future. Right, that's going to do it for the first hour.